And it's terrible triple feature time once again, and we're at the end of Val Kilmer month. Don't worry, there will be more Val Kilmer in the next couple triple features, I'm sure. But, you know, no longer will I be devoting our time to Val Kilmer as much. Uh, you'll forgive the hair, but I get up in the morning and, man, first thing I think about, Val Kilmer triple features. And we're ending it on a pretty good one. Uh, the sexy biopics of Val Kilmer. We're not going to look at, you know, terrible genre pictures or even worse direct-to-video pictures. Let's just look at, you know, fun Val Kilmer moments in which he is playing a real-life person and being very, very pretty. Our menu includes Wonderland, Tombstone, and The Doors. Uh, Wonderland is a film that purports to have the inside scoop on the uh, titular Wonderland murders. These happened in 1981 uh, with uh, John, big legendary porn store John Holmes taking part in some very, very shady shenanigans involving a fairly violent uh, criminal. Uh, Val Kilmer plays John Holmes, and, uh, you know, they don't actually show it, but, you know, it's implied. It's huge. Um, it kind of, it, it's not the best movie, but it's, you know, it's 2003, so it's one of those last pretty good Val Kilmer performances where he's, you know, still Val Kilmer in shape and, you know, just all around fun. Um, by and large, it plays like uh, Rashomon with... Uh, sleazeballs, where everybody's telling a different story about the same night, but nobody has the, you know, the one real story, including the filmmakers. So it's really kind of morbid and awful when you think about it, because they're just, you know, throwing different ideas and scenarios as to how, you know, really brutal, awful murders happen, which is just not cool. I think it was much more artfully done in uh, Boogie Nights. Uh, if you watch Boogie Nights, the um, the attempted drug dealer robbery with, uh, Alfred Molina at the end is essentially, uh, a fictional ver- or, yeah, a fictional version of the Wonderland incident where, you know, Mark Wahlberg's Dirk Diggler is, uh, taking the place of John Holmes. If you watch Boogie Nights, there'd been a couple different parallels with, John Holmes and Dirk Diggler. So that one, I would honestly recommend you watch Boogie Nights more than Wonderland because it's just not that interesting. Uh, Dylan McDermott uh, is wearing a really interesting wig, which is in direct competition with the really interesting uh, facial merkin, uh, neither of which looks particularly real, and it's just kind of hilarious to see him go all thug-like. Uh, Val is pretty goddamn annoying as the drug-abusing end of his career John Holmes. I'm beginning, like, watching these movies, I wonder if Val didn't view them as sort of a uh, vacation, because if you read behind-the-scenes stuff on Val Kilmer's career, he's an incredible pain in the ass to work with. But, you know, when he plays his character in the scene, he's usually spot on. He is a good actor. He's the character. So I wonder if he picks, you know, these particular uh, real-life people to play so that he can be an asshole on screen in addition to off screen. That's something to think about, Val. You know, look at it. Look in here and see what you're getting out of these roles. Other than, you know getting into a bathtub naked in front of Lisa Kudrow and staring at Kate Bosworth's really incredible ass. Next, in going in reverse chronological order, we have Tombstone, which is the story of Wyatt and his Earps in uh, Tombstone, Arizona. Pretty sure Arizona. Uh, it was a silver boom town and the, uh, the Earps... Uh, tried to carve up their own, you know, carve up their piece of the pie. 
Uh, unfortunately, they ran into trouble with other local hoods. I give them credit for, they didn't really try to whitewash uh, things so much as uh, more organize it. Uh, there wasn't really an organized group of cowboys with goofy red sashes. But just about everybody involved in the cowboys were people that Wyatt Earp had run-ins with, Wyatt Earp being played by the amazing Kurt Russell and his respectable mustache. I say respectable because, you know, when you're, when you're in a film with Sam Elliott, all mustaches uh, bow to his inherent superiority. Um, Val Kilmer plays Doc Holliday, and I, this might actually be my favorite performance of Val. He is just, he really steals the show because he's playing Doc Holliday. He gets to be the complete asshole <laughs> throughout the whole thing. He doesn't have to be the hero. He is antagonistic, uh, substance abusing, TV having, gambling wretch, and Val just plays him with great aplomb. And uh, does get most of the lines. Not all of the manliest lines. I think Kurt saved those for himself. But, you know, pretty damn badass. And totally annoying. I mean, keep in mind, for us, this is a great performance. Imagine living with this fellow and having to deal with all of his BS all of the time. But, you know, again, this is Val's vacation. Finally, we have... Uh, Oliver Stone's movie The Doors, which would have been more aptly named uh, Oliver Stone's Jim Morrison was a complete fucking asshole. The movie. <laughs> it's nominally about The Doors. The Doors are in it, but it's really about Jim Morrison's exploration of his mind and, you know, substance abusing pleasure. Uh, Val Kilmer plays Jim Morrison, and while, you know, I, don't, I haven't really watched a lot of footage of Jim Morrison when he was alive, but I gotta believe he wasn't the most annoying human being that has ever walked the face of the earth, but that was the approach that Val and Oliver went with. I, I mean, the movie's fairly long, and watching it became kind of an endurance test of, you know, just putting up with Val as Jim was just, it's, he is an, it's an astonishing performance. I mean, there are whole stretches of the doors where you just want to punch Val Kilmer in the face. And that's before you get into this like five minute sequence where he's running around naked with uh, Kathleen Quinlan to uh, O Fortuna. <laughs> It's absurd. And annoying. They're like particularly good were the, uh, the concert recreations because, man, it was just this giant captive audience for the biggest narcissistic asshole that's ever walked the earth. So, I mean, what else would you do if you got that presented to you? Yeah. You just make it all about you and annoying, which he did. And again, that was just great. And pretty. I mean, if you look at it in terms of Veruca Salt uh, acting ability, Veruca Salt being the really bratty girl from uh, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, uh, Val is do it is like five or level five Veruca Salt, in which she you want to kill him by the end of the movie, but that just means they're doing their job. They're, he's a great actor, which uh, again. Val is still a great actor. He's just not getting the movies and or going for movies that are good anymore. I think the last one he was actually released in the theater was maybe um, MacGruber, which again, he was fun, but it's just like, come back to us, Val. That's really what the whole this whole month has been about. We want you back. And playing annoying real-life people. I mean, who else is there? Maybe, you know, you got to look at some of these reality television show people. Maybe he could play one of them. That would be kind of fun. But um, next month uh, is April, my birthday month. And after watching a lot of bad Val Kilmer movies, uh, I, I think I'm just going to do all triple features in which I like 
most of, if not all of them, for various reasons, just because I need a break from the really, really bad stuff that I wouldn't watch normally. So look forward to that, and uh, I'll see you next week.